Welcome back to the pod. Man, episode 29. I cannot believe that in one more week I will we will be at, at 30 episodes. That's crazy to think about. Um and honestly kind of humbling and kind of cool to see the forward progress made and kind of compare where I'm at now versus when we started the podcast. Uh, but this week, um, I wanted to talk specifically about mindset and uh, I guess you could call it mission focus, right? Uh, specifically, what I want to talk about is, uh, you know, skill sets that go with with shooting, being prepared, some of these skills and things, right? Um, and I feel like once you get into it, uh, you start to realize uh, that there, there's so much out there. There's competition shooting. There's, uh, I guess for lack of a better phrase, tactical shooting, uh, self-defense shooting kind of gets broken off into its own subcategory because it usually, I don't know, uh, because usually it's from concealment versus like an open rig. Um, you know, there's, there's so many different avenues that, that shooting and firearms and preparation and training can take, right? Um, and it can be daunting. And it's really easy, especially when you're getting started, to end up going down that wrong avenue to just, um, you know, find that one YouTube channel that you really like, or find that one magazine that you really enjoy. Um, or maybe it's just the only one that's accessible to you, or maybe it's what your friends are all doing. Um, it, it's really easy when you don't know any better, right? You don't know what you don't know, uh, to get bogged down with stuff that's not important. So, I mean, specifically we talk about, your mindset of what got you to this point. Um, obviously it's important to you, right? You bought a gun. I mean, possibly because you thought it looked cool. Um, the videos online and, uh, the, 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 the vast amount of content that's now available out there. Right. So it's just something on, you saw it on Instagram, decided you wanted to do, but it's, it's deeper than that. And if for a lot of us that want to actually invest ourselves, uh, and get better and, and push, these messages, these ideas, right? That the second amendment is important and we have a right to freedom and a right to personal protection. How, how do we expound upon that? And how do we, we get mission focused or front sight focused or whatever you want to call it? How do you stay on track with that? And, and how do you, you achieve those goals and move on to what comes next? And I think that's uh, really critical, especially when you're starting out to set some of those goals, even especially, not even even, but especially small goals uh, to help track that incremental process. Um, you know, before I got into into all of this, and I was uh, an instructor, uh, a percussion instructor, you know, music-wise, uh, and I learned a lot of uh, skills that have transferred from one avenue of my life into many avenues in my life through that, that one activity. And I'll forever be grateful for that. And especially for the individuals that, uh, that led me there, you know, uh, I got a, a couple, a gentleman that I'm super, super happy that I can still call my friends, uh, Ralph and Scott and a handful of other people, but specifically those two guys that I'm still friends with that, uh, pushed me and helped shape me, um, into someone who knew how to, or learned how to focus, how to become goal driven, uh, not necessarily always results focused, but, uh, how to stay looking at what's in front of me while also keeping in mind what the end goal is. Um, so like we said, this is important to you. You want to get better. You want to be proficient. You don't want to be a liability. You want to be able to protect yourself. You want to be able to protect your family. Um, and we t- like I just said, you want to talk about celebrating the small goals. Um, so what does that mean, really? It can be as simple as going out and buying your first uh, defense firearm, right? Because a lot of us start out, you're a hunter, you own a, sh- a pump shotgun, and not an 18 inch security model, something that could be used for some kind of tactical or close quarters application. Um, or you got a, a bolt gun in a huge caliber, you know, like 308 or, you know, 6.5 Creed more or seven millimeter, uh, rem mag, you know, whatever you got something that isn't tactically driven 
and we've talked about some of that stuff uh, when we discussed hunting, but this we're talking about being better and more proficient as a shooter, right? So maybe going out and buying that first pistol, that first uh, Glock 17, Glock 19, Smith & Wesson M&P, uh, a SIG P320. Maybe that's your first hurdle, right? Maybe that's, you know, you're going to celebrate that. You're going to be, you're going to feel good about it. The, the key is you keep moving, right? So next, after you've, after you figured out what you wanted to buy and you went out and got it, or you have what you have and maybe it's not the most ideal, you know, maybe it's a, a 40 cal instead of a nine millimeter that you really wanted, um, but it still works, right? Maybe like it's a gen one M and P please trade in but it still works. Okay. So you got it. You're ready to move forward. How do you start? Right. Um, and I, and a lot of people will jump straight into shooting and building skills. And, um, I don't, I don't necessarily think that's correct. And I think some of the better teachers, uh, that are out there, better instructors realize that, um, you can't just teach the skills. You can't just put somebody in front of a target and spend an hour with them and it'll, get better. I mean, it will get better, but it won't remedy all the issues. What I'm talking about is take a step back. You have to do this. You can't have somebody do it for you because only you know these things. Uh, How do you learn best, right? Are you one of those people that can just read something uh, or watch something and you absorb it and then you can go figure it out pretty quick on your own? And there's some people out there who can do that. You know, maybe you're one of those people that has to get hands on. You have to go try it for yourself. Um, maybe you pick stuff up quick. Maybe it takes you a while. Everyone learns and digests and sorry, digests and processes data at a different rate and in different ways. So you have to understand first and foremost how that's going to apply to you personally, and then you can take the next step. Okay, um, whether you're working from a concealed holster or from a belt you know, with a drop holster, some kind of safari land or kydex, whatever. Um, You're going to have to have the gear for this kind of stuff. Um, But having what you have is also going to help shape what that path's going to look like. You know, um, if it's something where you're really focused on concealment and you're really focused on personal defense shooting, fine. Maybe you want to run the battle belt. You want to have something on your hip you don't want to work on concealment. Maybe you want to do both. Figuring out how to take that next step. Um, and I think while we push the message in the 2A community a lot right now to be uh, to be supportive, to be you know uh, nurturing, right, to to the community and to people who are new, and to help promote a positive image and idea of what's going on, that's just not the way it works. I've seen it a bunch of times. It's not. People want to beat each other down and or the, they may mean well and they end up just demeaning somebody or telling them, no, what you're doing is wrong because it's not what I'm doing. Okay. There's never only one right way to do things. And I feel like people will post videos looking for feedback. Okay. Hey, I'm new to this. Here's me running a couple reps. Maybe it's just a ready up drill here. Draw it put the gun on target, bang, or maybe it could even be dry fire, but same thing. And, you know, all, all you get is, oh man, you're going way too fast. Oh man, that's really slow. Or, oh man, that gun sucks. You should be getting something else. It's like, well, that's not the purpose of the, you know, this post or this question. So thanks for not contributing a goddamn thing and for trying to make somebody feel worse about themselves. Uh, Cause God knows times being what they are, financially speaking, we're not all in the, in the best of shape and firearms are not as readily available as they once were. Right. So here's one thing that I picked up when I was teaching. And I think it applies to multiple walks of life, right? Sometimes you just have to build a habit, even if it's bad, even if it's partially incorrect, right? sometimes you just need to set the foundation. You have to have something to build off of. Okay. And then from there you can shape it, you can modify, you can mold it. But if every time you're reaching out, you know, for help and they're trying to change everything that you're doing, change how you do it, change how you think about it, you don't give yourself the time to really absorb that, 
that information and you lose confidence. Okay. I saw it over and over when I was teaching kids, uh, they got moved between, you know, and it's, it's different, but it's kind of the same. You move them between different instruments or sections or whatever. You move them and put them around different people. As humans, we need time and a familiar environment to develop that confidence in any walk of life, whether we're talking about shooting, or we're talking about music, whether we're talking about working at the office, uh, whatever. You have to give yourself time to build confidence and to build understanding. So... You know, to quote the movie Goon, which you've never seen it, it's a pretty funny movie, probably, in my opinion, Sean William Scott's best movie. Not a very great actor, but uh, the coach, when they're teaching him how to play hockey, says, you got to suck to get better. And it's a pretty brazen way of saying it, but it's true, right? You got to be bad at something in order to be able to get better at it. And I think sometimes people forget that. They they jump into this and they go, well, this sucks. I suck. I'm never going to be able to do this. This is super annoying. And I don't understand how so-and-so got better. Okay. Well, you got to suck to get better. And we all started someplace and anything we're doing is worth doing right and putting in effort. And those of us that are successful in any walk of life, pro sports, uh, business. Yes, of course, shooting anything. Look at any of those people and they're going to tell you it doesn't come overnight and it doesn't come easily. Now, you can have things happen that really help along the way and and kind of jump start the process, but it doesn't happen overnight. So once you kind of figure out where you're at personally and how you want to go about this, how you learn best, right, you have a little bit more clarity. It's just putting in the time and kind of opening up the feelers, right? Uh, We talk about practice and training a lot, whether it's live fire training or dry fire training. Here's the secret to getting good. Practice. And it sounds like a, you know, it, it, it sounds stupid that it's a secret. And we used to, I used to do this to my students all the time. Like, you guys want to know the secret? I'll tell you. Okay. And you get all quiet and everything and you just yell practice at them and they all laugh and they, it's like, yeah, of course you're going to say that, but it's true. You know, if you don't practice at something, you're never going to get better at it. And it sucks, right? Cause nobody always loves practicing. I remember when I was learning how to play drums, right? Uh, I hated the fundamentals, it wasn't until years later that I become an instructor myself that um, I had that ability to look back and see, well, yes, I hated that at the starting of every season, we had to learn how to hold the sticks and we had to learn the six basic stroke types, even though I'd already done it the year prior and I'd already done a bunch of you know repetitions of these basic, basic fundamental exercises. It just serves to re-ingrain those things and and strengthen your foundation. So take that as well that you can't you can't always dismiss the fundamentals um, and that sometimes the most important things are the ones that are the least amount of fun. But you know, don't be afraid of that stuff. I feel like sometimes people try to roast each other because yeah, hey, you're gonna spend some reps and all you're gonna focus on is indexing the pistol in the holster. You're not going to draw, you're not going to aim, you're not going to pull the trigger. It's just bringing that right hand back ever so slightly and down until you got the, like the tang or whatever that skin between your thumb and index finger on the back strap of the gun. Or if you're working from concealment, maybe you're just working on clearing the garment and indexing the grip. That's all you do, like 25 reps, 50 reps. Yeah, that sucks. It's not that cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. You don't see videos of people, you know, throwing that around on Instagram and YouTube. Sometimes they'll you'll see like the humble brags, like yeah, because this is the kind of stuff that's important, and it is. Um, I just feel like the people that go around and promote how much they work on some of those fundamentals are a little douchey. Not entirely, but a little bit. Um, you know, and you you can build up from there. Maybe it's just drawing and sight alignment. Okay, once you get the indexing down and you figure that out, then you can work on the draw and your sight alignment. Maybe still not pulling the trigger yet. 
Okay, and you'll always have to go back and touch on that fundamental of being of properly indexing, right? Because all of this is a perishable skill. If it's not touched on from time to time, it does start to degrade to some extent. But you know, you're gonna build skills off of skills and and get better and better. And okay, so how do you know if you're doing the right things? You can take classes. Um, right now that's difficult with COVID. Uh, it's also very expensive because people's time is very expensive. This is what people do for a full-time living as well as the cost of ammunition right now is absolutely stupid. It's higher than it's been since I got into shooting. Um, and you know, I'm sure you'll have the old men jump up and say, oh, well you should have been around during the 90s. Okay. Well in the nineties, sir, I'll have, you know, I was in grade school. Okay, I graduated the fifth grade in the year 2000. Sorry to put that into perspective for you, but uh, I wasn't even legally able to own a firearm until like 2007. So I, yeah, I'm sorry. I was not around the last time the ammo prices sucked this bad. Oops, I'm gonna shut off my phone there. Get the old Fox News alert. Um, so you can take classes. Obviously, one-on-one, well, classes aren't really one-on-one, but in-person instructions, quality-wise, as long as you go to like a decent instructor, probably the the biggest thing. Um, <clears throat> but like I just said, you know, financially speaking, it, it really isn't that easy for a lot of us. Um, so then there's also dry firing and all of the electronic resources that are being laid out before you, right? Um, I feel like you're starting to see now that COVID has obviously, uh, basically killed most of the private instruction industry. As far as firearms go, all these traveling companies and traveling instructors that used to hold classes all over the, their various regions and all over the country can't anymore because the local governments are restricting, you know, in-person gatherings and, and whatnot. And if you're in a Democrat controlled state, I'm sure they're like, you know, firearms training is the first thing to go on the list of non-essential shit, right? So dry fire and electronic resources, these companies are starting to put out content that you can either get for free or pay a fee for. You get access to more videos or they'll watch the videos and give you feedback, the whole like video lesson thing, which again, going back to my time spent teaching and in music, I know that was something that a lot of people had tried pushing even before the pandemic. You know, you get these great musicians and these great instructors, or maybe they taught at a certain group that you really wanted to audition for, you know, Hey, can you give me a lesson? Yup. And people are charging 50 bucks for an hour over a zoom call, uh, which Hey, uh, it's not dumb if you get somebody to pay for it, right? But not something that I personally ever did. But that's the world that we're adapting to now, right? Um, But you can learn a lot. And I feel like up until very recently, people that were of the mindset that you can use YouTube and the internet as a viable learning source um, were roasted. You know, Uh, you had a lot of people in the training industry that said, no, 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 there's no way. Nope, nope, that's just a bunch of idiots that don't know what they're doing. They're, you're going to shoot your buddy in the leg, and it's video game nonsense. And I'll say, to some extent, there is a lot of that out there. There's a lot of channels on YouTube doing stupid shit, and a lot of people that talk about doing things that they have no right talking about. Um, on the flip side of that, I've gotten it on good authority, and I wish Sam was here. Sam's actually... Um, out of state right now prepping for his last surgery. So we definitely wish him well. And I'm super excited him super excited. I'm sorry to get him back in here. We got a lot of stuff planned once he's uh, back on the mend. So good luck, buddy. Wish you all the best. Um, but I've got an authority from people in law enforcement, former military, current military, whatever, <clears throat> just because you're a police officer does not mean you're an authority on shooting. Police officers have to qualify like once a year. And if that's the only time you're hitting the range, think about that. These are people that have to go out there and carry a gun as part of their job every day. And they only practice with the thing once, maybe twice a year. Like I work in finance. I use my gun more than that. 
that should say something. So you always have to consider the source, right? Um, same thing with the people that want to like maybe rag on you or give you shit. Consider the source, uh, whether it's somebody who's analyzing your video for you on YouTube or Facebook, or it's one of your friends, because we all have them that want to sit there and shit on your day because they think it, it's ridiculous that you feel the need to be well prepared and personally armed. Consider the source. Um, you know, military, yes, you go through basic training, but think about all the multiple different facets uh, that are involved in the military. You know, I I have a, a father-in-law who's former Navy, went into heating, ventilation, and cooling, has done very well for himself. But it's not a combat-oriented skill set, obviously. So would he be the first one I ran to to ask questions about shooting? Probably not. I have an uncle who worked with computers in an IT-related field when he was in the Navy. Same thing. Probably not going to go to him. Who do I go to? <laughs> People like Sam, special operations individuals in the Air Force, uh, friends who are law enforcement that that do train, that do put that time in, right? Um, or even just other individuals that know more than I do. And it can be outside training. It can be about weapon maintenance or upgrades or any of that stuff. Um, just don't take one person and what they know um, as gospel. But it's important, right? If you really want to advance yourself and you really want to get as much out of this as you can, build a network. And we talked about this concept. <clears throat> um, we were talking about bugging out, right? Prepping the bug out, your escape plan, what that's all going to look like. Talk to your friends. It, it's It's similar. It's very similar. And, uh, and honestly, in a lot of cases, it might overlap entirely. Who knows? But we talk about setting up a network for bugging out with people who are doctors or have <clears throat> medical-related skills, uh, people that know how to grow and, and make food uh, and, and, and care for and, and store food, people who know how to work on and maintain vehicles, uh, people that know how to shoot, people that know how to hunt and, and butcher meat. You know, that's, it's all stuff relative to what we're talking about here. But in this instance, building your network is the people you're going to reach out to and bounce ideas off of and, and discuss all these concepts with, right? So you got friends that were, you know, shooters, uh, competitively, you got friends that are former military or current military that have the applicable experience or the, uh, you know, have the knowledge that you're looking for or friends in law enforcement that enjoy shooting and enjoy training, and enjoy all this stuff. Um, maybe you make some friends uh, through the interwebs, you know, I, I don't know, but build that network. So you have people to reach out to bounce ideas off of, right? That's super important. And it's also going to help maintain confidence, right? If you have more positive energy, you're going to want to do more and you'll be more driven to do better, to get closer to those goals. That's huge, whether it's a, a, a big goal or a small goal. If you're hitting goals consistently, you're going to feel better about this and you're not always going to hit it. Sometimes you're going to fall short, but again, that's, what's important about having those people there. So, you know, Hey, it's easier to look at and say, what did I do wrong? Why did it fail? And also to help pick you up when you fall. You know, we, I talked about this a couple of episodes ago, um, you know, mental health and your emotional confidence and stability and everything. It's super critical, uh, having pe and you know, you look at people who are successful again and you know, who do they always thank when they finally get success? Usually like their wife or their mom, their dad, you know, people that supported them regardless of how well things were going or how bad they were going, um, but build a solid network and don't be afraid to reach out, you know, uh, personally, digitally. Um, there's a lot of magazines and published works that go into a lot of this stuff. I just finished a book uh, a few weeks back on like the neuroscience piece that goes into building fundamental shooting skills. And I can't wait to get further into that uh, with Sam when he's back, right? But 
don't be afraid to reach out and don't be afraid to ask the question, you know? And again, there's going to be some a-hole that jumps up and says, well, that's stupid. You know, why do you not F and know that? It's like, well, because I don't know, you know, we all started at some point. We all didn't know certain things at some point. Um, <coughs> don't be afraid of that, you know, and be a sponge, right? Absorb as much information around you as you can. Uh, we always, from any interaction, any job, any, you know, encounter in life, uh, you, you learn from all of it, whether it's what to do or what not to do, you can still walk away from those encounters and those life experiences, whether good or bad, having learned something. And in most cases we do, whether we realize it or not, you know, you think about the, you know, getting fired from a job or leaving a job. You think about why'd you leave? Oh, well, because I hated it. Okay, but but really, why did you leave that job? Well, because I knew what I was doing and I liked the job, but the supervisor was awful and treated me like shit. Okay, so in the future, when you get promoted and you end up being the person in charge, you're probably not going to do that because you've been on the receiving end and you know how much you can't stand it, right? You learn from that experience how not to be because you were the one on the receiving end. So you know the kinds of feelings and the kind of environment that builds. So same thing with this. Uh, and even to a certain extent, you figure out what works for you, what doesn't work for you. Uh, you know, Hey, maybe carrying appendix doesn't work for you. Maybe you're a bigger guy. Maybe it's not comfortable for you. There's lots of people with lots of different levels of experience that either, you know, do carry appendix or don't for different reasons. Here's how you can overcome the shortfalls of either one. Th there's a lot of information out there to be had if you go and look for it and you know what sources to check. Again, not everybody's going to have all the answers. I think that's really important. I think sometimes we get really, really hung up on, uh, I don't want to say Instagram celebrities, right? Because a lot of these people genuinely do know what they're talking about. People like Travis Haley, people like Chris Costa, um, to an extent, uh, Lucas Botkin from T-Rex Arms puts out a lot of content and say what you will. I know a lot of people like to hate on him. Dude's a good shooter. He's put a lot of time and thought behind the stuff he puts out. You can disagree with him, and I do on some things as well, but it's hard to say what he's doing is wrong because it works. Now, that's a relative statement because it works for him. Obviously, I'm like twice as big as he is uh, you know, width-wise, uh, so it's a little bit different. That doesn't mean what he's doing is wrong or what I'm doing is right. It just means that's what works for him, right? Uh, and, and to that point, that's why social media has become probably the greatest strength in helping people like myself get to where we want to be and to learn and to grow. But it's also tremendously toxic because you still do have some of these guys that, I mean, this is how you see the videos of people uh, looking straight down the barrel of a loaded gun and shooting themselves in the face. And then people go, this is why we shouldn't have guns. Uh, it's also where you have people sitting there ragging on each other going, oh, you're an effing idiot. You shouldn't do this. Why'd you buy that gun? Hey, you suck. You should just swallow a knife. You know what I mean? Like that toxic keyboard warrior mentality. And we see it with like politics too. And that's why I can't, I can't fucking stand social media anymore. Uh, I'm, I'm very close to just eliminating everything I have to do with Facebook because it's just drains my life and it bugs me and wears away at me. Um, and to that point, you know, when you run into those situations and people want to start some shit with you, it's tough. It's tough for some of us more than others. Um, but letting that kind of stuff go and, and staying, you know, focused, uh, on your mission, right. Staying focused on your goals to get there, you know, to be honest with you guys, I get a lot of shit for this. I got friends that give me grief for having a podcast about shooting and preparation. Uh, I have some friends that give me a lot of kudos for it. Uh, I definitely, definitely, whenever the Second Amendment comes up, though, have more people looking at me going, why? Or telling me you don't need that. Um, you know, so keep things in perspective and the, the scope of your uh, 
project. You know, that's something that I uh, hear in the workplace a lot is you, you're working on a project, you're, you're working towards accomplishing a specific goal, right? And you have to keep things in perspective and keep things in scope. So ignore the stuff outside of it. Maybe you need to deal with it, but maybe not right now. You know, that's not, not what's important. Um, like I was saying, social media can be toxic. A lot of the, the content that's out there from some people is what you should absolutely never do. A perfect example of this is the guy that ran uh, Voda Tactical, V-O-D-A. And I think he gave himself like a stage name or something or, or went by, I think it's Lucian Black or something. I believe he's like Haitian or something. He does speak with an accent. Um, but his content and his material is so awful. And as a result of his stuff getting out on the social media, he was actually stripped of his certification by, I believe it was the NRA. So he's not an accredited instructor through the NRA, which, okay, I mean, that's not the end of the world if you're not an accredited instructor through the NRA. However, it does send a pretty strong message if you get stripped of that, uh, you know, license or, or title or whatever, Purely because someone found your instructional content online and deemed it so offensive and unsafe that they wanted to pull their name off of that as soon as they could. You know, talking about at at the flat range, right? At And I'm talking about like your neighborhood gun range where everyone's in a stall. You should not be drawing from concealment and, you know, compressing the gun into your rib cage and shooting towards the paper target that's a foot and a half away and then pulling a, a caram bit out from behind your back and slashing the target and then coming up and backing up four or five steps and shooting that target as you back up out of your bay. That's the kind of stuff that like he was putting out. And that's why he gets so much shit always on social media. Um, well that, and I guess to clarify the fact that he came out and has made statements since then that his uh, principles and his methods really do work and really are uh, safe. And he's like doubled down on it. He's even gone as far, I believe, to accuse some other uh, trainers of stealing his material, of stealing his methods and making it their own and trying to flip the script, so to speak, and make himself the victim in all this. That's the toxic side of social media in, in the gun world. And that's the stuff that gets distracting, right? Is, you know, I saw that and I was like, okay, this seems a little bit lame. Um, I'm not sure if I'm about this, but maybe, you know, for some of the people that saw that and go, hey, that guy clearly has done this, you know, thousands and thousands of times. And his videos even had his students in there. So somebody at some point in time decided to pay this man money to teach them how to shoot and how to defend themselves. So again, it's only dumb if you try it and nobody buys it, you know? Uh, so really toxic you really have to learn how to filter and sort through this information. Now, once you find those good sources, then it's a little bit easier to kind of look at their content and you don't have to really filter for the, the validity and the accuracy. And then you can start focusing on, will this work for me? How can I work on this? And, and how can I get better? Um, you know, keep in mind that everybody's goals are and should be different right? Uh, if you know, some people pick stuff up faster, easier than other people do. So if your buddy is working on split times, you know, running a bill drill, all that is for you guys, either from a holster or not just six rounds on target as fast as you can. Okay. If your buddy is working on trying to crush split times on his bill drill and you're still working on, you know, proper sight alignment out of a holster, Hey, that's fine. Maybe you struggle with that. Maybe once you got the gun out and your sights are on target, maybe you're good. Um, it's okay. That stuff changes and it's relative, right? If you buy a Glock after spending the first three years or five years that you were shooting, uh, running something like a Smith and Wesson M and P it's probably gonna be a little bit different, right? Cause the grip angles are different. Also, if you're switching over from using iron sights to a red dot, it's going to be different. That's why you have to practice. 
it's okay. It doesn't mean that you're a worse shooter or anything. It just means that your goals right now are a little bit different. Your friend may struggle at reloads. You might be able to crush reloads. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, right? So that's the, the good and bad about all this is that you, you kind of, you, you have some marks you can measure yourself against. Um, and it's good because you can kind of track forward progress. Uh, but don't let that get you down and kill your confidence and kill your morale because it's different for everybody. Um, I, I think in that same breath, it's really important. We talk about those marks and measuring your forward progress. Accountability is huge with this, right? You have to hold yourself accountable. If close enough is something you find yourself saying or thinking or, eh, I'll hit it next time. That's that's a pretty big indication, and it's the hardest part about learning anything. Um, I know when I was learning, you know, going through learning drumming, and now when I'm going through learning shooting. <coughs> excuse me, uh, going through either learning process. Sometimes the most important things are the ones that you absolutely hate working on. Hate it. Uh, I know when I was learning to drum. The one thing that absolutely killed me was turning on the metronome to keep time and having to work on timing exercises. Okay, I I hated it because I struggled with it. I understood it. I just struggled to to do it, line it up perfectly with that metronome on every beat, and then also start moving my feet to it because you know it was marching band, so you got to be able to move your feet to what's going on. Once I got to a certain point. It was no longer an issue for me, but it was something I always hated. And I, for the first couple of years, I tried to find every band aid possible to get around that, you know, a different way of faking it or thinking about it. You know what? In the end, it, it all comes out. So suck it up and put the time in and you'll be way happier for it. Uh, just like with shooting the, the one skill it, and I'm still not great at it, but the one thing that I struggled with the most is uh, speed reloads, right? Um, whether it's with the AR or with the pistol, uh, is is just building that consistent muscle memory. Now I'm, you know, you index the mag and you pull it up. I hitting that mag well every time. You know, it's difficult for some people. It just clicks. They just they just get it. Most people, I would imagine, don't. You just got to keep working on it. And once you you get it figured out for yourself. You figure out how much you got to tilt the gun inward, or if you pull the rifle in under your arm, you leave it shoulder, whatever you figure out what works for you. Then you can spend some time. You just build the habit, you reinforce the skill set, and then you just retouch on it. Right. Uh, but you got to hold yourself accountable. Hey, I'll get it next time isn't okay. Hey, that was good enough. Isn't okay. If you set a certain goal, maybe it's a time, right? Five seconds to do a one reload, one drill or something. Um, and you get it in 5.2. Uh, yeah, it's close enough. I'll mark that as a win. It's like, no, if you came out and said you were going to do 15 reps today that were five seconds or faster, 5.2 doesn't cut it. Do it again you know, you got to hold yourself accountable. And I see that in the workplace a lot too. And I think in our country, even right now in, in general, we lack accountability. I think that if more people were accountable for their own success, their own protection, uh, whatever, we'd be in a better place. I really do. It really bothers me how many people I deal with on a daily basis that want to deflect their problems onto somebody else. It's somebody else's fault. There's a reason for why they're unhappy or they're not better off. And it's never their fault. That, that shit kills me. Uh, sometimes it's valid. Most of the times it's not. And chances are, if you know, listening to this right now, you probably got one or two people that pop into your mind. I got one or two popping in my mind right now as I'm saying this. It's super frustrating. Again, that's one of those things, though, that's kind of outside the scope of this project. So you got to just ignore it and, you know, move forward and worry about yourself and stay accountable and and push on. Um, it's important, though, 
while you're holding yourself accountable to realize it's like we, we I think we already said this. It's not going to happen overnight. I'm positive we already said this. It's not going to happen overnight. Work on your individual skills. Celebrate the small victories, the small goals that you hit. And then take your time and start combining those skills. Maybe drawing from the holster and aligning your sights. You got that figured out or at least to the point where you feel more comfortable and confident and your pistol reloads, you're at a point where you're a little bit more confident, right? Reloading from the belt or wherever you carry your magazine. So now you're going to work on the draw stroke and then one reload one, whatever, whatever the case may be. Maybe it's target transitions with a reload thrown in there. Uh, you know, don't rush it. Okay. When you hurry through things and it's this way in pretty much anything in life. And I'm sure we can all hear our parents in the back of our head, you know, and my, my dad used to tell me all the time, it takes just as long to do it right as it does to do it wrong. And honestly, it takes longer to do it wrong because you got to go back and fix it and go back and fix it and go back and fix it. Whereas, you know, so that way you spent three and a half hours, uh, doing yard work for me, it was always yard work as a kid. I hated trimming the hedges and I hated raking the leaves. So I would try and find any way around it that I could. And yeah, it would take me like three and a half hours. Or if I had just shut up and buckled down, I would have gotten it done in two hours, two and a half, maybe, which is still, yeah, as a kid, you're like, okay, well, that's still two and a half hours. Like, yeah, but if you look at the math on this, that's an hour or an hour and a half. You could have been out doing whatever you wanted, playing video games, watching TV, out with your friends, eating candy, like whatever. So suck it up and, and do it the right way, right? Uh, take some like personal pride in it and you, you'll feel so much better. I, I know the first time I actually hit one of my target times uh, on a pistol reload, I was like, man, I don't even know if I know how I just did that, but that felt awesome. And you just you do it again. And for whatever reason, it feels like when you first get it, you feel amazing. And then like the next 15 reps after that, you won't get it. And it feels like shit. You, know, you, can't, you can't understand why you don't just have it now that you did it once. And I used to run that all the time with drumming. I would feel amazing if I learned like a stick trick or I learned music or, or something. I made this breakthrough in my playing ability. And I was like, awesome. This feels amazing. And then I wouldn't be able to do it again. And I have to just keep working at it and keep working at it. And, you know, eventually that breakthrough isn't a breakthrough anymore. It's like a standard. It's a new standard for yourself. You just keep raising that bar a little bit by a little bit. Um, you know, and then you look back on it. And, it, and you can go, wow, I can't believe six months ago that's where I was. I used to do that all the time at the end of a season, whether I was teaching or performing. The the look back was always one of the most fun parts because you're like, man, six months ago, you guys couldn't carry the equipment. You couldn't march and play for any more than like 30 seconds, and it was a total calamity. You get to the end of the season, and these kids are doing all kinds of amazing stuff. And it's, as an educator, it's really cool to see. But as an individual performer, it was really, really cool to think about where you were at the beginning of the season and stuff that you couldn't do then, you you do in your sleep now. It's like, wow, that's amazing. And that's really where the confidence comes in and then the comfort, right? And you start pushing yourself and you can kind of maybe start helping some of your friends with some things or, you know, uh, but be mindful through all of that. Just because you've achieved some of these goals, you should still be open to criticism, right? Like we just said, nobody's ever got all the right answers. And the people that think that they do often end up being the most wrong, right? And <laughs> this is awful, but the first thing that comes to mind saying that is honestly the Detroit freaking Lions, okay? I love my football team. I'll always love my team. But my God, have we had some general managers that thought they were the smartest guys in the room, that they were right, and literally everybody else was wrong, and man, do we suck. Uh, it's actually December 16th right now. We're like two and a half weeks removed from us actually firing our last general manager and head coach who like lived that concept. They were the smartest guy and nobody had more right answers than them and they didn't need anybody telling them what to do. It's like, well, 
we pretty much entered the shittiest era of Lions football since like we drafted Joey Harrington in 2001 or 2003, somewhere in there. Anyways, so clearly that was wrong. And you look at places, teams, companies that are successful, it's the total opposite. They want the outside input. You might not agree with it, and it, it might not end up actually being true, but it's always good to get an outside perspective. You look at, uh, there, that's why there's consulting firms that exist. Look at, uh, I'm going to butcher this, but like Jocko Willink, the Navy SEAL, his uh, company, Echelon Front. Uh, it's it's him and I uh, and Life Babin. I'm, I'm probably butchering both their names, but they have a consulting company that's all about building leadership. And obviously these people that they work with built these companies and run these companies. So they got there somehow. It's not to say that they don't know what to do it. It's just that, you know, outside perspective sometimes is the most valuable thing that we can get in order to propel us towards our goals. So be open to that criticism, which can be difficult for us. We have egos, especially you've been doing this for a while. You're like, nope, nope, you're wrong. You don't know. But why not hear somebody out? How hard is it to have them say, hey, man, you're doing this. Maybe tense up more, tense up less. Maybe bend your arms or straighten your arms. You know, some little tweak, some little thing. Instead of saying, what the fuck do you know? I've been doing this, you know, for 10 years or hey, let's give it a try. And if it works, well, hey, man, cool. Thanks. I just I just cracked the code, right? Because chances are, if you need somebody else to look at it, you've probably been struggling with it on your own for a little while. You know, it, it doesn't, it's not that big of a deal. You don't have to turn around and say, you know, screw you, I'm not listening to you because you don't know more than me. Like, well, he might not know as much as you, but maybe in this one particular instance, he or she has the right answer. Why not, right? What do you have to lose? It's not a shot at your ego. And I think people put way too much weight behind ego and way too much weight behind their own personal experience. It's like there's always going to be somebody better. Just keep an open mind and and keep your wits about you. So I hope that this, uh, you know, I hope this makes sense. I hope that you guys benefit from this because right now as we're at least entering the winter i feel like this is like prime time to have this discussion either with yourself or maybe with a group of friends you know uh, as it gets colder and it's more difficult to get to the outdoor range well that and the fact that ammo is really really hard to find and super effing expensive if you do find it uh so this is a really good time to sit inside and dry fire i actually just sat and dry fired for about 45 minutes before i decided to sit down and and record this episode because i thought it was really pertinent um the thoughts i was having while i was working through it and this was a concept at least to some degree that i had uh, jotted notes down on i'd wanted to record about for a little while so uh set those goals for yourself and and don't get discouraged and don't let other people tell you that's a dumb idea or that you're not going to get there or you're never going to need it if it's important to you it's important right I know this firsthand, right? I mean, I got crap all through the time I was like 14 to the time I was like 22 because I was a a band geek, right? Oh, well, you're not going to be able to do anything with that. Oh, well, it's stupid. Why don't you play a sport? Well, okay, joke's on you because I was a national finalist six times in the group that I was a part of. I learned a lot of leadership skills. I developed a ton of skills and traits and and things that I know are responsible for setting me out, uh, you know, uh, from the rest of the crowd that have made me successful in my career, made me successful as a human being, you know, and then of course, after I turned 22 and I couldn't compete anymore, I started teaching and, and that was one of the most rewarding things I've done in my life and will continue to do in my life is, is teaching. But also, yeah, I, did for a while there perform with the Detroit Lions drum line. So I was on the field for eight home games a season. And I mean, I saw a lot of losing football, but I was also on the field and getting paid a little bit to be there and have some great memories and traveled to London and it didn't cost me anything other than what I drank basically, you know, I mean, so it all comes full circle. So even if you don't see it now, that doesn't mean you're not going to reap the benefits at a later time. And just because somebody else doesn't see any benefit in it, 
if you do, that's what's important. Um, and, and that might just be an even more clear indication that you should you know, change some of the people you're hanging out with, uh, you know, stay mission focused guys. I can't say how much I appreciate you taking the time to listen. Uh, and I really do hope that this has been helpful. I got another episode coming next week, uh, trying to get Trevor to sit down with me. It'll be our 30th episode. So it'll be a little more lighthearted, a little bit more fun. I'm really looking forward to it and I hope you guys will enjoy it too. But until then, stay focused, get out there and train. And as always be prepared.